What's up, everyone? Welcome to yet another episode of Cartoon Fight Club. I'm your host, Animation Rewind, and if you're new to this series, be sure to check out the older content. But if you know how the game is played, then let's get ready for the fight. Tonight's episode was animated by Smackader, so if you enjoy what you see, head on over to his channel and subscribe. Speaking of tonight's battle, we have a fight between Ken from Street Fighter versus Kung from Mortal Kombat. And before we break down these characters, I want to remind you that I started a new series known as Internet Geographic, the first episode's topic being I Hate Everything, and if you haven't seen it yet, go watch the Cartoon Fight Club Ultimate Showdown. It's worth your view, and if you've already seen it, it's worth watching again. So with all this being said, let's introduce Cartoon Fight Club's next round of fighters. Ken Masters is the son of a rich hotel tycoon. When Ken was about 12 years old, his father believed that he needed to learn how to become disciplined. So his dad sent Ken to Japan to be trained by a karate master. Ken became comfortable spending time with his master and enjoyed hanging out with his adopted son, Ryu. Ken was eventually ready to leave the dojo when he turned 23. He was able to go off into the real world where he would compete in competitions against other opponents in America. Ken learned many great fighting techniques from his master, which allowed him to become successful in his competition. His most notable attacks include the Hadouken, Shoryuken, Heat Rush, and many other melee styled attacks. Shotokan is a type of fighting style that Ken learned during the time under his master. It's a very dangerous type of fighting style because it's used to actually kill other opponents. Ken uses a signature attack known as the Hadouken, which is a surging punch that creates energy into his palms. When he pushes his palms towards his opponent, a wave of energy is thrown through the air, knocking his enemy down. The Shoryuken is a jumping upper cut knocking the opponent down. This move is effective if it lands, but it can be dangerous if it doesn't. This leaves Ken wide open, allowing his opponents to attack him if the attack doesn't land. Ken is most dangerous when he's in a heat rush. His entire body is covered by flames for a short period of time. The heat rush will allow him to become more precise, making him stronger and more effective. He is also able to create more combination attacks, hit harder, when he's in this heat rush. Ken is also very durable. He once survived falling down a 100 foot cliff and also survived the blast which was strong enough to destroy a building. Ken was also able to beat Ryu four times in the past along with many other fighters including M. Bison, Zangief, Charlie Nash, and many others. Overall, Ken is a very skilled and trained fighter that won many matches against his opponents, but some of his attacks can leave him vulnerable after performing them. From Street Fighter to Mortal Kombat, let's discuss Kung Lao. Kung Lao was a member of the White Lotus Society. The White Lotus Society was jointly founded by Raiden, the immortal protector of the Earth Realm. The Society's existence is kept secret from the general public, leading to rumors spread by the population. Because of this, many people are unaware even of the existence of other realms. The goal of this society is to learn and understand how to defend the independence of the Earth Realm from the threats of other worlds. Kung's most iconic use of combat comes from his razor sharp hat that he wears all the time. He uses this hat in many different ways. He can throw it, swing it around, jab it, and it's mainly utilized to slash fatal amputating cuts toward his opponents. The hat also appears to have supernatural properties. No matter how far he throws it or where it ends up, the hat will somehow materialize back onto his head like an instant boomerang. The hat appears also to have some degree of teleportation as well. His signature moves include the wind teleport, double pass teleport, the hat throw, the hat grinder, and the ground hat. A lot of these moves are pretty self-explanatory. The wind teleport allows Kung to go to the ground and reappear behind his opponents. The double pass teleport does the same thing, but passes through his destination twice to cause confusion along the back end of his teleportation. The hat throw is extremely self-explanatory. This is where Kung throws his hat as a long range attack. The hat grinder is where Kung uses his hat like a buzzsaw as a swift acting slice styled attack. And last but not least is the ground hat. This is where Kung swings his hat downward to lower his opponent's position causing damage. Now while the hat does have minor teleportation abilities, it is not perfect, and without his hat, Kung becomes extremely exposable. He is extremely reliant on his hat and it makes up an overwhelming majority of his game plan during tactical fights. Overall, Kung is a very skilled hat warrior, but without his hat, he is the exact opposite. And now, let's get ready for the fight. This battle will take place on Earth with no prep. Let the battle begin! I have no quarrel with you.
I now have a quarrel with you. Nice try! Reminder, I started a new series known as Internet Geographic, and the first video's topic is I Hate Everything. Plus, remember that idea raffle? Well, I'm adding two new ways to earn extra ticket slots for free. You will get five extra slots each if you click that link down below and download Cradle of Empires and Sword of Shadows. Cradle of Empires is a really cool match 3 puzzle solver, and Sword of Shadows is a very unique sword fighting platform action game. Tweet, Google Plus, or Facebook me a screenshot of you completing at least three puzzles in Cradle of Shadows for five points, and tweet, Google Plus, or Facebook me a screenshot of you getting to the second fire scene in Sword of Shadows. Downloading these apps with my custom link will support the production of more animations and this Total War, plus it will also give you a great chance to have your dream idea become a reality. And since I added two new apps to the list, I'm going to extend the raffle date till June 20th to give you a little more time, just five more days to make sure everyone gets a chance to download these games and reach the screenshot goals. Please, download these apps and good luck. And stay tuned for the total war between Super Smash Bros and PlayStation All-Stars. It's gonna be a big project, but I need your help to make it a reality. So download those apps in the description below. And now for the post analysis. So the winner is Ken. Now before we discuss why, I owe a huge shout out to the battle animator, Smackaderp. If you enjoyed what you saw, head on over to his channel and subscribe. So yeah, our winner is Ken, and while Kung was the one wearing the hat, Ken is the one wearing the crown as this fight he is crowned the winner. But it's important to know that this is a rather close battle, yet there are a few key reasons why Ken can flip the hat on Kung and take the win. When it comes to speed, well yes, Kung can teleport, which will give him an early advantage. After Ken figures this out, he can simply use his speed rush to have a supreme edge in speed. For more clarification, Ken is easily on par, if not an overall better fighter than Chun-Li. This is the same Chun-Li who was fast enough to keep up with teleporting enemies and durable enough to survive a blast that destroyed an entire forest. With this direct scale, this can prove that Ken's speed rush technique and the fact that Chun has proven to be this fast, Ken can not only keep up with minor short range teleportation but has a massive edge and durability as well. Not only did Ken survive a 100 foot cliff drop like nothing, but the power needed to wipe out and create a crater that has the length of at least 10 helicopters that are on average of 58 feet, so a 580 foot in diameter crater that is at least 20 feet deep would require at least 400,000 tons of TNT. How do we know this? Well, a very similar blast happened in 2013 when a meteor that caused a similar blast landed in Russia. Kong is a very powerful fighter, but he doesn't scale to someone who can survive 400,000 tons of TNT like Ken does. And then there's the whole argument that Ken is much more reliant with his own body than Kung is. Without Kung's hat, he is really exposable. While Ken has trained to only use his inner energies and his own bodies as a weapon during combat, which makes him far more responsible and reliant compared to Kung. To put things simply, Kung might fight with his hat, but Ken fights with his head making the winner of this battle, Ken. Now there's a bigger rivalry at stake than just Ken versus Kung. So if you want to see a Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter Total War, all you have to do is like this video. If this video gets 20,000 likes, there will be a Total War. Also, don't forget to comment down your own ideas and stay tuned as I reveal the next fighters. On the next episode of Cartoon Fight Club. Uh. Well
共处一天下。